talk to so many new people afterwards to see what we need to do about that. Um, and technically, next Sunday was supposed to be the, uh, my last Sunday as an intern. So, uh, so this is actually my last Sunday in that particular role uh, as an intern. Uh, so that means that things are progressing and moving along. And uh, I'm sure you will hear, be hearing uh, hopefully good news uh, in, in, in short time. Yes, I will still be here. Yes. Okay, uh, Troy. So, men's group, the 30th, is canceled. We are going to meet on the 23rd at 1 o'clock. Okay. That just got changed. <laughs> okay. Men's group, 23rd. Yes. Okay. Any other announcements? All right. I'm a little out of breath. We were rushing because we got uh, held up by a very slow track this morning. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, Father Lord eternal, giver of Lord light Lord and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, for our own deliberate fault. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us of all that is past and lead us out from darkness to all as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with repentance and faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 359, where charity and love prevail.
inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you for the... Give the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Be not afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will read responsibly Psalm 103, verses 1 through 7, 8 through 13. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless, Bless the Lord, Lord O my soul, soul, and, and forget, forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life, your life from the grave and, and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all the he made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our witness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. The second reading is from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in the honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? 
For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that you need 
special. Okay, should we say a little prayer? Okay. Dear God, thank you for being with us. Thank you for forgiving us for everything that we do wrong when we ask you and say that we're sorry. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thanks a lot, Bailey. I will try to remember. Christian faith seriously, 
and they began hiding Jews in a secret room in their house, the hiding place, and helped them to escape from the wrath of Hitler until they were eventually found out by the Nazis. Father was killed, and the two sisters were taken to the concentration camp of Ravensbrück, where they were humiliated and tortured, and there her sister Betsy died. In spite of all this, Corey continued to trust in Christ and proclaimed the gospel to everyone in the camp. At the end of the war, she was freed by the Allies, and for the rest of her life, she traveled the world recounting her story and telling of the love of Jesus. In today's Gospel, Jesus tells us that we must forgive. And he too tells a story about forgiveness. But I would like to read to you about one encounter that Corey Ten Boom had in her travels, in her own words, as she wrote about it later in Guideposts magazine. If any of you have familiar with that. And I hope I can read it to you without choking up too much. She wrote, It was in a church in Munich that I saw him, a balding, heavy-set man in a gray overcoat, a brown felt hat clutched between his hands. People were filing out of the basement room where I had just spoken, moving along the rows of wooden chairs to the door at the rear. It was 1947, and I had come from Holland to defeated Germany with the message that God forgives. It was the truth they needed most to hear in that bitter, bombed-out land, and I gave them my favorite mental picture. Maybe because the sea is never far from a Hollander's mind, I liked to think that that's where forgiven sins were thrown. When we confess our sins, I said, God casts them into the deepest ocean, gone forever. The solemn faces stared back at me, not quite daring to believe. There were never questions after a talk in Germany in 1947. People stood up in silence, in silence collected their wraps, in silence left the room. And that's when I saw him, working his way forward against the others. One moment I saw the overcoat and the brown hat, the next I remembered a blue uniform and a visored cap with its skull and crossbones. It came back with a rush. The huge room with its harsh overhead lights, the pathetic pile of dresses and shoes in the center of the floor, the shame of walking naked past this man. I could see my sister's frail form ahead of me, ribs sharp beneath the parchment skin. Now he was in front of me, hand thrust out. A fine message, Fraulein. How good it is to know that as you say, all our sins are at the bottom of the sea. And I, who had spoken so glibly of forgiveness, fumbled in my pocketbook rather than take that hand. He would not remember me, of course. How could he remember one prisoner among those thousands of women? But I remembered him. And the leather crop swinging from his belt, I was face to face with one of my captors, and my blood seemed to freeze. You mentioned Ravensbrook in your talk. He was saying, I was a guard there. No, he did not remember me. But since that time, he went on, I have become a Christian. I know that God has forgiven me for the cruel things I did there. But I would like to hear it from your lips as well, Fraulein. Again, the hand came out. Will you forgive me? And I stood there. I whose sins had again and again to be forgiven and could not forgive. Betsy had died in that place. Could he erase her slow, terrible death simply for the asking? 
It could not have been many seconds that he stood there, hand held out, but to me it seemed hours as I wrestled with the most difficult thing I had ever had to do. For I had to do it. I knew that. The message that God forgives has a prior condition, that we forgive those who have injured us. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, Jesus says, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. I knew it not only as a commandment of God, but as a daily experience. Since the end of the war, I had had a home in Holland for victims of Nazi brutality. Those who were able to forgive their former enemies were able also to return to the outside world and rebuild their lives, no matter what the physical scars. Those who nursed their bitterness remained invalids. It was as simple and as horrible as that. And still I stood there with the coldness clutching at my heart. But forgiveness is not an emotion. I knew that too. Forgiveness is an act of the will, and the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Help, I prayed silently. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You supply the feeling. And so woodenly, mechanically, I thrust my hand into the one stretched out to me. And as I did, an incredible thing took place. The current started in my shoulder, raced down my arm, sprang into our joined hands. And then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bringing tears to my eyes. I forgive you, brother, I cried, with all my heart. For a long moment, we grasped each other's hands, the former guard, and the former prisoner. I had never known God's love so intensely as I did then. Amen.
true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one the holy Catholic and the Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Remembering your caring and generous works, O God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We pray for the church. Bless the missions and ministries of diverse congregations, that they uplift the good news of salvation in ways that can be understood. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and healing to rivers clogged with pollution. Enrich the soil for trees and plants. Protect the crops needed to feed those who hunger. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for all who govern. Encourage those in positions of power to lead with empathy, practice forgiveness, and care for those who struggle. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for our neighbors who face illness of any kind, for those strained financially, for all living with chronic pain, mental illness, the disease of addiction, or otherwise afraid or in harm's way. Protect all who cry out for mercy, especially for all those on our prayer list and those we name in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation, open our hearts to forgive one another, practice patience, and welcome all. Move us to care for those in our community, seeking refuge and safety. Merciful God, we give thanks for the saints who died in faith. Show us how to live faithfully, creatively, and lovingly in your church and world, as did Hildegard, abbess of Finden, whom we commemorate today. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And, and also with you. <laughs> Share a sign of peace.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 615, In All Our Grief. 